So greetings and salutations, greetings and salutations, one and all community. How do you do? How do you do? In these COVID-19 times? <laughs> well, the rumor is here in Jamaica that COVID is receding, and I'm glad and excited. And I'm excited to be having my first family interview on Fabian Say. And it is a very esteemed and distinguished Rain and Drady family that we're talking to. And I'm really excited because it's two wonderful people. And we're going to be also talking to their two wonderful children. And it's going to be niceness. Arsenio and Carol, how are you doing? We are well and wonderful. You gave me a little excuse to put on some lipstick. <laughs> In these and types you, of face masks. <laughs> I tell you, no. And you are in Toronto. You're in Toronto. Yes, we are. It's, it's so good to have you both on here. And I guess as we go through this interview, a little bit of our histories will be revealed. And you came to mind because my show is not about, you know, the salacious and the drama. I want to kind of focus on light and good. And um, you are a set of people who I feel good when I think about you. Oh, I feel good when I know that you're in the world. And I feel when I think about our history and our paths crossed a long time, we know each other, you know. Long. And I said, you know what, let me ask Carol if they'd be interested in being interviewed. So welcome, 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 welcome. So, the Orain family is one of Jamaica's families. It's true. And it's one of Jamaica's families that's known for goodness and giving back and service and graciousness. I do workshops whenever you talk about the Jamaican brand invariably the first name mentioned is grace kennedy almost without fail so let's talk about your family how many siblings do you have i have two i have a big brother and a big sister i'm the baby you're the baby baby and your and your mom's that's so what your mom was what was your mother's name daisy may daisy. lucille ebanks married orin all right and your dad's name was his first name was douglas so what was it like being the what was it like being the baby? <laughs> um, I think I got away with a lot, <laughs> but I think we were all first children, sort of spoiled um, in a way, because there is eight years between Douglas and Margaret, and three years between Margaret and myself. So right. it was a wonderful um, revelation with each child. So I think we were all sort of first children and we growing up we were never we we're allowed to be who we wanted to be how much of that has impacted you as a mother a wife and a parent i'm telling you a huge impact because one thing um our parents always recognized and emphasized was we are we're all three different and we were never compared right. so i never heard why don't you be like Douglas and Margaret? Mm. And Margaret never heard the same thing either. We were allowed to explore our own strengths and encouraged to do that and um, to build on those. Um, you know, having um, two siblings go to Harvard Business School, the mm. expectation would be for the little one to go to. Well, no, Carol went to York and studied dance. <laughs> And it was okay, you know, right. so, but um, it had a huge impact, um, just giving us each a sense of self, right. and, um, not comparing one to the other, recognizing um, my sibling's strengths and, and wanting to embrace that, and then passing this on to my children, and also working it through the marriage, you know. Um, Arsene and I don't argue anymore. <laughs> nice. It's because we have reached a place that um, we're comfortable with each other. I know his strengths, he knows my strengths, and we're we're very compatible. We always have been, but... <laughs> so before York, what school did you go to? York University. So before you went, what high school? I went uh, to Wilma's Prep, then Wilma's Girls, and then I went to St. Hughes for 6-4. Okay, nice. 
And then dance now is where you came into my life. That's right. Yes. Did you all, did you, when did you know you wanted to be a dancer? Always knew. I mean, mommy and daddy pushed us into ballet from age four. And right. I grew up, by the time I was 12, I hated it. And I said, mommy, I, I, it was mainly mommy because, um, you know, she's the one that used to take us to classes. And um, I said, I'm tired of this. I don't want to do this anymore. And they said, both of them said, no, you have to stick with it. You can't just drop things. So um, I continued ballet until the RAD. I forget the last exam I did. And then I took a year off. Right. And then I discovered School of Dance. Right. Jamaican School of Dance. I think it was when I went to high school, might have been. And so I used to walk up to classes at School of Dance and um, had teachers like uh, Barry Moncrief, Bert Rose, and was totally inspired um, by them. And um, I remember also Sandra Minot um, was mm -hmm. at St. Hughes. I was at Woolmers, so we would kind of link up and walk up together. Um, and then I, you know, when I graduated high school, um, I was looking at programs to do and it was either languages and then I realized that there were dance programs. And so I applied to York, I got a reference from my ballet teacher and based on that, they accepted me. Um, awesome. Master of Fine Arts program. Nice. Yeah. And I tell people, Carol, you one of the dancers people wanted to be. <laughs> because let me tell you something, when you touched a stage, something happened. There was something magical I will never forget. And the two major companies you danced with in Jamaica, like Katka and NDTC, whenever you came on stage, the, I think the first time I saw you do the Sata Solo, the world stopped. The world stopped. I thought to myself, what is going on here? What is this woman doing? How is she bewitching the entire audience with such control and such great, and you know, Sata was that whole possession thing, so you're looking dead out in the audience while your body is doing all this. And I thought, who is this woman? <laughs> I was. I mean, to see you recreate the same kind in, in NDTC. And it was, it was magical. You know, when you see somebody doing what they're meant to do, it is unquestionable. It, it felt like that most of the time. Yeah. But I must say that uh, by far, Sata is one of those um, works that transports you mm -hmm. somewhere else. In the yes. whole preparation, um, I remember actually traveling when we went when we performed in Mexico. I, it was like I was on a cloud. Um, we were on a tour in Mexico and um, I went somewhere else. It was, it's yeah. a very, very spiritual. Um, in my day, um, you had to have done pretty much all three, the other two parts to be mm -hmm. able to properly do the, uh, the soloist work. Yes. Because you, it was embodying all yes. those women, female warriors. Yeah. And I say it now, and, there is and, a and deities. There's a handful of women who have danced that solo and owned it. A handful. And you are in the handful. <laughs> because it really is a life thing. It's a it's a thing about art and being an artist. It's about your life and what you open yourself to. That's right. Yeah. And so I'm going to jump now. So we we start to hear now say NDTC get two Cuban dancer. <laughs> two bands were coming. <laughs> and we said, Ray, Cuban are come. This is supposed to be good because you know Cuba's history and legacy and culture. And I remember going to see the NDT when the viewer in Arsenio and Tuki came. And just mashed up Jamaica. They just mashed up the place. Mashed up the the <laughs> Here's the first thing that visually. Here was this dash of caramel in the middle of all this chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> Your eyes were drawn to them because they were the brownest male dancers. So you had no, and then when they started to move again, I said, look at God. Because the training, the technique, the precision, the grace, 
it was it was uh, it's one of those things that you know if somebody wasn't there it's hard to fully describe to them yes. that moment and then are saying you stayed on and stayed in jamaica for years and really etched your way made your mark um you found your way into our hearts um and outside of seeing you on stage when i know when i got to know you just your power and your strength and your realness always struck me like your your greetings were always so genuine and hearty even before i knew you well you you saw people you stop and greet people and there was something so grounded and strong about it that was beautiful so talk about your journey to jamaica now so you came from cuba as a dancer proper proper professional dancer and so you had studied this for how long um i started my career um back in 84 1984 in in Santiago de Cuba, my city, and um, they came. I remember that there was a group of um, pro, uh, teachers who came from the the provincial school of ballet, looking for dance because they was uh, they were saying that they trying to open a new school, a modern dance. Nobody knew what was that, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, one one thing one one thing I can tell you is like uh, Cuba already had prepared us for dance. Because through the national television in Cuba, they brought the culture in those uh, uh, for the poor people, for any type of uh, family. So, in a regular basis, we used to sit down and watch TV and we used to see dance competition. Nice. Um, salsa, um, you, uh, for example, do you think you can dance? It's not new to me. It was happening in my country many years ago. You yes. Know? And Cuba is very rich for the traditional dance form, Santeria some and um, you walking every street and you see people dancing yeah. you know it's in the blood um so they came i did the audition not knowing my future just went because they took us there mm -hmm. and then when we went to the starting the secondary they i went to my school i remember walking into my classroom and the teacher is, is going passing the um how you call the assistance the register and i hear I don't hear my name so you know my eyes start watering i'm like what the hell happened here and i call i went to the the the, the to the professor and to the teacher and say what happened my name is not there i said no you don't belong here and i'm like but my friends are here no but you know you are you supposed to go to the school of art i'm like what <laughs> from that group well, i was one of them who went through you know i am like um wow ballet now oh shit uh, people want to tell me different things, you know, and but you know, Fabian, little by little, start enjoying my my what I was doing there, and then I went to do went to did we did this um, general exam that it will take many dancers around Cuba. They go to Havana, we do the uh, final audition to go to the the National School of Dance. That is the prime, you know. Right. And it happened to be that I was selected and I went through, and I finished, and then join Eduardo Rivero company right in 89 you know and therefore um for a year with him he selected me to be one of his um teachers uh, that people had to follow my classes and they had to do my classes and was happy and then one day he knocked my door and said I need you to go to Jamaica I'm like Jamaica for what you know um I mean no disrespect then at that time I didn't know what everybody was aiming to go to Mexico Venezuela Spanish country you know Jamaica right. Uh, the only know about Jamaica is butterfly. At that time, um, Carlene, um, Carlene, how you call it? Carlene. Queen, Carlene, was going to Santiago to do butterfly, butterfly with um in the Caribbean, um, boat, you know. And there was a fever, looking that beautiful woman dancing, and that's the only thing I knew. And um, beside Bob Marley, you know, and the and the whole um, story about Rastafaria, you know. Um, but like having a company to go and perform, I didn't know anything about it. Right. Eduardo have some books and then he start talking to us about who was Professor Rechner for NDTC, the history of NDTC, you know, and then little by little start to understand the Jamaican culture. So, mm -hmm. and to be honest, the first two, three months I went, I didn't like it, you know, and that is, I'm honest with you. I was like, oh, wow, it was a new culture to me. Yeah. Um, how people talk about how how people uh, express themselves very similar as Cuban but in English in Patois, okay? Yes. But, um, 
and then I, I meet this little bird and um, even before I came to Jamaica, I saw her in a book and I say to myself, oh, what a beautiful woman. And fall in love in there. I'll right. get this song for her for real. I say, okay, right. big thing I go on. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and little by little, building my way, working at um, Edna Manley College, you know, understanding the the Jamaican culture more and more. Um, the Zoom com, it was something that was new to me. Uh, <laughs> I tell you what time and come in the different time. So I learned and I started loving Jamaica more, more, more than Cuba. And yeah. it just happened that sometimes we argue because I said to her, I would like to go to Jamaica before I go to Cuba. And she wants to go to Cuba before Jamaica. <laughs> so, and remember something, Fabian, I came to Jamaica when I was 24 years old. Wow. I left Jamaica when I was 39 years old. Yeah. But my youth was there. So, so Arsena, you are you are still, so you're a dance teacher and choreographer at Ryerson now, right? Yes, you're yes, still I was at Ryerson. And Carol, you are at York University? No, I'm at the University of Toronto. I'm purely administrative now. Okay. I've left the dance world, one dance in the family is enough. And, um, <laughs> you know, having been in a family business and all, all through the years, um, this is, I found the perfect job. So pretty happy here. <laughs> nice, nice. And the decision to move to Toronto, talk to me about that. What was the most challenging thing about the move? Ah, you know, work-wise, I think we were lucky. We lucky. were very lucky. Within me, start um, being here a month, I, I had started working. Yes. And within landing, being Arsenio being here a month, he had started teaching at Rares. Yes. And here he's still teaching now. Yes. Um, yeah, it, it, it's a whole different way of life. You know, this mm -hmm. social... You, you leave your friends but you have, and you have to make new ones and dance is harder to find the kind of dance that, you know, even for our daughter Yashima, you know, to for her to get the same kind of classes, we would have to travel forever. So mm -hmm. she ended up doing um, ballet at a school a block away. Um, you know, just um, the norms are different. You, you have to make appointments to go and visit. Um, <laughs> yeah, you have to call, yeah. And, you know, gone were the days of sitting outside and blasting your music, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> um, we still don't drive here. We take public transport and it's fine. We we enjoy that. We live in, in, in Toronto proper. So um, we love moving around, um, you know, especially in the summer. Yes. And we're not going to let COVID um, distract from that this year either. Nice, nice. On, onward. You know, you know, the Jamaican saying, what is feel cannot be unfeel. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah, Clearly. Fabian, Fabian, Jamaica has been good to us. Canada has been good to us. Nice. Uh, good to us. You know, I, that's, that's what, that's a global, um, the, the global feeling for everything. Yeah, as I say, gratitude is a must. Gratitude is a must. Yes. I think we're in a good place now to bring in Kylie and Yeshima okay. into the conversation. So we brought in the <laughs> children who are big people themselves. And Yeshima, you're born in a good month. You just had a birthday recently. Yeah, um, on Saturday. I turned 21. Child. I was mine was I was I'm May 7th. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah. Twins. rock. We yeah. rule. We're going to talk quickly. So, Yishima, I gather. So, Yishima, you dance? I used to. I stopped. But I do sometimes dance on and off with my dad at Ryerson. I do help him with his salsa classes. Okay. So that's, like, the most dancing I do right now. But it's not your first love? No. Not what your first, what's your first love now? Probably food. <laughs> <laughs> Right now. Okay. And Kyle, what's your thing? What is what is, what do you enjoy doing? Uh playing football. Um up here in Canada they call it soccer. So yeah. yeah. Um I played I was a varsity captain for Ryerson University. Right. And um, I did a very good job over there. Um and it changed a few things up. So and a few of the commentators used to refer to me as a rock from Kingston, Jamaica. 
Right, because I remember seeing some award-winning stuff and these mentions of you showing up in your in your lights. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, they actually did a documentary on me about my uh, journey to making the team because I didn't start off the traditional scouting. You know, um, coming in, I was uh, I didn't make it the first two to three times. I was equipment manager, and I went from that to becoming a captain and an all-star. And you also additionally have gotten heavily involved in like advocacy and volunteerism as well. Yes, definitely. Um, one of the beautiful things about Ryerson is that they have a lot of scholarships and with one of, a lot of the criteria is giving back. Um, so initially I'd done it to kind of reduce my loans, but then I got really addicted to it to the point of doing around 100 hours um, a year. Um, of volunteering work. I even dyed my hair pink one time for breast cancer research um, and for fundraising. And I've just done a, a, a whole lot of things from um, triathlon volunteering to working with kids to um, working with homeless people and, and running soccer clinics there. So wow. definitely I enjoy giving back. I've definitely kind of embraced it here and so you went to Woolmers, right you went to Woolmers boys yep we're in the colors right here and then you do it and yet and you went to ryerson in toronto i went to ue actually for a semester oh you did yeah just to boost my grades up a little bit to better my mm -hmm. transcript because i kind of slacked off in my last year of high school but um i got into ryerson part-time and then i said you know what this is my this is my second chance um not to mess it up so after that i just focused and i went from getting in as part-time to on the dean's list now nice. what did you study uh business technology management okay cool and yashima you're still in school now what are you studying um so i go to york university so same university as mommy and Currently doing a biology major, and I'm going into okay. third year. This coming September. All right, so we have some some family questions now. <laughs> so, what's the best advice you've gotten from either of your parents, either of you? What's the best advice they've given you? Parents are very supportive, which I'm very thankful for. Um, and like I usually go to mommy, and like it gets really on to daddy, and they both give me their opinions and everything. So usually mommy, when I'm very nervous about my exams or something, mommy will always be like, don't worry about the end result. Just try your best, do your best. God is with you, God is the answer. She always says that to me right before I walk out the door. Um, but she's always like, just try your best, do what you can. Don't worry about it, just relax and everything like that. That's like the best because I'm very, but to exams, it's I'm very anxious when it comes to those. I guess for me, it's kind of been the focus on family. Um, just remembering how um, the advice is, I guess, would be that family is the most important thing. And I think that helped me get through a lot, um, knowing that I've always had these two literally right beside me to hold my hand, to walk me through things that I didn't think were possible. And they've set me up in many ways for success. And I always paid forward to them in any way that I can. So I guess it's that because, you know, having these rocks basically um, being there for me, it's just been obviously life changing and not everyone is lucky enough to have this. So they just really um, drove the importance of, uh, of a good family. And for me, it's changed the way I've seen things, um, especially now working. You know, um, everyone's focused on trying to get the best job, this and that. And to me, yes, I would love to have a great job, but having a great family is just as important. Mm -hmm. But after that job is done, when you come home, that's when you want to unwind. And if you're not around good people, you're not going to enjoy. And you'll bring it into your workspace as well. So mm -hmm. I'm very fortunate enough to have them and for them to push the importance of love. And I mean, to touch on what Shima says, yeah, every day we walk outside, you know, parents remind us so much that they love us, um, you know, that we'll walk with, you know, God. There's something, is there a passion, is there a pastime, a hobby, something that you all share in common, that kind of bonds you together in addition to the love? Is there something that you all love to do or some kind of shared passion? We're always in the kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> 
So it, my next question was, who is the best cook and who's the worst cook? Best cook. Best cook. Oh, wow. Oh, definitely. <laughs> we're, we're, all, we're, all, we're all really good. We're learning. Yeah. <laughs> But if you're talking about uh, one thing, um, if the, if someone walks into the kitchen and opens a bag of chips, just know about three to four hands are going in there as well. <laughs> <laughs> who is the neatest and who is the messiest? <clears throat> neatest. Messiest. I'm, neat. I'm definitely the messiest. I'll I'm take that. Kyle, so Kyle and Arsenio, is, do you guys have like a, a, a that, that classical father-son bond? Is there a is there a is there a is there a thing is there something that's special between the two of you? So, um, as many of you will know, based on the previous like parts of the interview, Arsenio is not my biological father, but that has never stopped me from calling him my father. Um, I think um, up until like a few years after my dad passed away, um, you know, he he kind of. I think we just sat down and he was like, you know, it's okay if you want to call me dad, don't feel any pressure to it, just letting you know. And I sat down and said, you know, he is my father. Like he's been in my life since I was three. If I had, if no one had told me that I had another, that that my fa- my biological father was my father, I would not have known because the amount of love that he has given towards me mm-hmm. is ridiculous and it's unconditional and it's what um, any father son can have. Um, we have a very good close relationship um more so sometimes i see him as an older brother because it's not that he rules with an iron fist you know he kind of rules with like um a guardian a bit of guidance and trust me i've lost my way a few times and he's been there to kind of set me straight so it's definitely uh, a unique bond and i mean I've, I've never shied away from saying that he's my dad and many times we're walking on the street um he'll wear my rice and athletic gear and someone will be like oh i message me and say oh i saw you and your dad or oh i saw your dad and you know oh you guys look familiar and you know i maybe we don't always look i like familiar familiar but our mannerisms are definitely very very interesting. nice is she my young mom is there this bond mother daughter bond connection thing going on well yeah it's you know the mother daughter relationship that every girl has you know you have those specific conversations you can only have with your mommy <laughs> and not with your dad um but yeah when when it comes to very like sensitive like feminine like anything to do that i know my dad can't really help me with i go straight to mommy and i usually like I don't know, mommy and I are just, you know, close and everything. Oh, yeah. We always have like heartfelt conversations when times get rough and everything. But <laughs> like other than that, mommy and I are pretty close, so. Who is the hothead in the family? Who lose them temper quickest? <laughs> <laughs> and then me. She's a good Yes, that's side. That's side. Who is the peacemaker? <laughs> mommy. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Who's the one who's like sweetness and light? Who's the healer? Who looks after? Who's the nurturer? I think follow me. No, mostly, <laughs> mostly, me. mostly. Me. I will come to them and say like, all right, well, let's just chill and you know, yeah, that's true. That's just let's just relax. It's not it's too really much, <laughs> too much to get into. So okay, so at the point now in the interview, everybody who comes and does this interview has to play a game. Okay. okay. You pick the game you're playing, so you have five options. One is spelling. Oh, no. It's rapid fire, where I just say some words and you say whatever comes to your mind. Okay. There's one called, let me ask you something, which is asking some basic generic questions about your life. And there's the more risque version called Mix Up and Blender, that I get, uh, Kyle and Kish, uh, Yashima may not want to play with their parents. <laughs> <laughs> and then the last one is Jamaican Trivia. So which one are you picking, family? Well, I'm pretty sure we all have different answers. So, because I'm no, I'm not, I'm not afraid of anything, and but it's up to the parents, it's their decision. Am I allowed to not answer a question? <laughs> you, you, you're allowed to not answer. Okay, okay. I'm fine with that. Okay. okay. Like, Mom and Dad mix up and blend up. All right. I like Chris. So I like Chris. Chris. So Just nervously. That's so great. <laughs> So first one is, have you ever shoplifted? No. No. 
<laughs> There's no. a huge fine for that. No, thank you. I got to the supermarket and okay, come well. out. Um, uh, roll the basket out and see that tin of condensed milk. I'm in the car park and I roll the basket back in and I go and I pay for it and then I leave with my receipt. <laughs> Not taking any chances. <laughs> what was the last lie you told? Boy, <laughs> I don't lie. I told someone they were really good at something and they're a <laughs> god awful. <laughs> Anybody else? I'm very honest with everybody, so... She told me I was skinny, she was lying. <laughs> no, you didn't miss me, your head is just skinny. <laughs> is, has there ever been like a villain in a movie or a series that you secretly liked? Um, I guess for me in Avengers, I liked Loki. Oh, Loki, mmm. Anybody else, a villain that you secret, like you liked? Maybe like Scarface. Scarface. And Al Pacino? Yeah. Yeah, he, yeah, that guy, he's, he's an epic villain, but also, yeah. <laughs> and another one is Joker in Batman Returns. Oh, yes. But, um, that, that's, Heath that's Heath Ledger's Joker. Heath Ledger's jo Joker, exactly. Ridiculous. Yes. Did you, see, did you see the recent one with Joaquin Phoenix? Uh, I haven't, but I've heard way too many good reviews. I just... Mind-blowing. It is mind blowing <laughs> just think about what he never did and times it by 10. wow yeah. okay yeah, it's not an easy watch it's very heavy because yeah. you know batman is the most psychotic superhero yeah so the villains are arts, but they, they really went it, it is absolutely mind-blowing he deserved every award he got for that uh, is there ever a hero in a movie or series that you disliked <laughs> I don't know, I'm not a fan of Aquaman as much. I, like in the cartoons, he's great, but I feel like they didn't really get into it that much. Okay, so you're like, hmm. Mm. Has there ever been a time when you did something where you should have apologized, but refused to? Yes, every every day with my girlfriend, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? A time when you should have apologized, but you refused to? I mean, I'm very stubborn, so when I feel that I'm right, I won't re I won't apologize for it. I won't apologize for being stubborn. I won't apologize for my attitude getting too big, you know, because yeah. he has the biggest problem with it. He doesn't like my attitude that much, but it's very hard to, to suppress it because it's just a part of me, so. Right. I guess so, so you're like to apologize for it. No. <laughs> yeah. Normally, I feel like normally we all apologize for stuff. It just, if it's something that's consistent, that upsets us, then I think that's where um, we won't apologize because we feel like, okay, it's time to stand your ground. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Carol Arsenio, is there something that you should apologize for that you refused to or didn't? My challenge with that one is that I, I worked out how to apologize. Sometimes it's not necessarily for what a issue might be. Um, so I might not feel sorry for an action, but I feel sorry that it hurt you. Yeah. And I will say that I feel sorry. that, But it, it might not be for what you think I'm apologizing for because I've worked it through in my head. When was your first kiss? Do you remember your first kiss? My, My first kiss was probably in prep school. Yeah, in prep school. Prep school. Mine was prep like... School. I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Does not <he> remember? <laughs> I don't remember with who, but I don't want to say. <laughs> Mine was spin the bottle in prep school, for sure. <laughs> Carol, do you remember your first kiss? My first real kiss must have been as a teenager. I was too busy dancing. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> Have you ever been envious or jealous of a friend? Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I usually wish my friends the best, but I've definitely been jealous of situations where they've come into. Um, I guess most of the times is not when it's about hard work or merit. It's like they just get get something, and it's like uh -huh. I wish I was that fortunate or lucky. You know, it's not 
I've never been jealous about someone's work ethic because I feel like I should be able to match that. It's just, I guess, certain things that are out of my control that I'll get jealous of. Carl, you said yes as well? Yeah, well, but you know, again, working it through, I guess this is wisdom coming that, you know, um, just be grateful for what you do have. So um, I've, I've tried to um, teach myself and to guide also my kids not to be jealous or envious, but just to appreciate what we do have and um, celebrate what others have. Yeah. Nice, 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 nice. All right, so I've spared you some of the more risque questions. <laughs> <laughs> so I want you to think about two things now. What we're going to wrap up with. So one is, is there, is there, do you guys have any unresolved things you need to say to each other that you don't just have to say on camera now? So do you have any unfinished business? Either conversation you need to continue, a point you want to that you haven't made. She, um, yeah, she does with them. She does with them. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. definitely does with them. Oh boy! <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm dead. Um, but anybody else? It's all you know, right now, but just think about it. Is there, you know, any conversation that you need to finish or things you need to say with each other? I would encourage you to do that. <laughs> I don't really think so because um, we usually end up resolving it like yeah, we do. after, mm -hmm. like that same day, maybe like a couple minutes, um, an hour after. We usually end up resolving it that day. So, right. but as with every family, there's conversations that get put on hold. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, so, in wrapping up, I want to thank you for saying yes to this interview. Um, thank you for asking us. Yeah. I also yeah. want to bless, I want to bless you and wish you all the best. Thank you. Um, your lights shine brightly as a unit, but also individually. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It's a beautiful thing to see, you know, in the way the human kind of found their own way, their own path. And testament to what you said, Carol, how you were raised, that nobody, you were forced to be in a mold, that people find their own expression, that individuals sharing a space. Um, and it's a beautiful thing. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Bless you. I'm affirming your highest good and every good thing and safety and protection as we weather this COVID-19 right. pandemic. Yeah. And we're going to come out to the end of it better because you know, the new normal, some of them are actually more efficient and more effective than what we were doing. Mm -hmm. So I'm encouraging myself to carry the lessons with us. Yes. So thank you very, very, very much. Bless you, bless you, bless you. God bless, God guide, I'm circling it right back to you. <laughs> <laughs>